Hello, my fellow Godonuts. This is Kyle back with a helpful tutorial series on how to make your very own plugins for the Godot game engine. It's a fairly simple process that I'll take you through, and we'll go through easier to more difficult plugins. This first tutorial will show you how to add a custom node into the editor so that when a user activates your plugin, they see a node show up when they hit the Add Child button. This series is going to be at least three videos. But this first video is going to be pretty short, as it's just the first part of a larger plugin that I'm currently working on. With that, let's talk a little bit about plugins. In Godot, a plugin is simply a piece of code that can be added to the editor itself and is executed at game editing time. It can do things while running too, of course, but primarily you use plugins, also known as add-ons, to change how the editor looks, feels, or functions. More or less the entire Godot editor, as far as I can tell, is built on plugins. So they made it really very easy to make them and dynamically integrate them while you're in the editor itself. There are some specific reasons we're going to be making plugins in this series. For this first tutorial, I recently participated in a game jam, specifically the Tri Jam, hosted by Rock Knight Studios, one of my favorite groups of people. Check them out on Twitch in the description below, and while I didn't end up finishing my game, I did end up making a really simple plugin to make a dynamic, texture-based line that follows a path I'd made. Any path, not just a hard-coded one. The first step I take in creating a plugin is to identify what it needs to do. Does it need a custom node type? Does it need any custom resources? And does it need a custom editor? These three questions usually tell me exactly how complicated my plugin needs to be, so I can estimate how long it will take me to make. Now, why would I even do something like that? Why not just dive right in? The fact is, I may not need to make a plugin. Most of this stuff can be done perfectly fine without plugins. The key difference here is reusability. If I think I'm going to use a piece of functionality in the future, I tend to lean toward just making it a plugin if I can do so relatively quickly and without much pain. As such, I've created an entire Git repository filled with plugins that I've been working on. I will include that in a link in a future video. The plugin we write today is going to be one that just takes any 2D path as the parent and draws a line 2D with or without a texture that follows the path. It'll allow you to set properties on it as well. As such, I'll be answering the first question I asked with Yes, it could easily use its own custom node type. The second question I answer with, I don't really think it needs a custom resource. Mostly that's for custom data that might need to work in a very specific way or be used in conjunction with a custom node. The third question I would answer as, I'm not going to need a custom editor, as the one built into Godot will be usable enough. I could go that route in the future if this needed to be more complicated, but it's so straightforward, I probably won't ever need a custom editor for this specific problem. The next step in creating a plugin is another really easy step. I'm gonna show you how to do that now. As you can see, I'm gonna create a new game here. We're just gonna name it YouTube One. It's a great name. Create and edit. Okay, my thing showed up on the other screen, that's great. Okay, so here we are in the editor. I'm just gonna create a new 2D scene and call it main. It doesn't really matter. Then I'll save it here. Now what we're gonna do is go into project settings here. And at the top, you can see in this tab bar, there's a few different options here. We're gonna go to plugins. And the first thing you do is actually just hit create. And that gives you this dialogue. This dialogue is very simple. It was added by Mark William Nations, I believe his name is. And all you really have to do is decide a name for it, um, add in these options, and that's pretty much it. For this, I'm going to call it Path Line 2D. There's not really any particular reason for that. I just think it's a nice name and fairly descriptive for what it does. It's a line that follows a path.
For the script name, you can always put in something else here. It doesn't really matter what you put here. This is not the most important part, but uh, I do it anyway. And for activate now, uh, I leave it uh, checked. You don't always want to do that because you might be making changes right away that uh, you don't want it to be activated yet, but for our purposes, I'm going to leave it. Now, for the actual plugin.gd, the file that it just created, you can see a few different things here. There's tool. This just tells the editor that this is a tool script, which means it can run actively as we're in the current process. It extends editor plugin. Extending editor plugin is just a class that gives you the options to modify the editor itself. And you have enter tree and exit tree. Enter tree is a thing that happens when the plugin itself enters into the tree of nodes that the Godot user interface is created out of. Exit tree is what happens when it leaves. So this happens when you close the app, uh, when you close Godot itself, or um, you know, whenever uh, something closes it. This gets called and removes your plugin from the uh, tree. And you need to be very careful and make sure you do that because if you don't, it will potentially, very probably, give you a memory leak. Anything that you add here, you should remove. And certain things, which I'll go over in a later part of the series, uh, you actually have to queue free them or that will cause you way more significant issues. Okay, so let's go ahead and actually create some of our stuff now. Um, before we even edit this, I'd like to know exactly what I'm working with. As you can see over here, when I hit that create button, it also added this add-ons folder. And as you can see, the folder name that we put in, which is Pathline, uh, it created that there. So we can right click on this folder now and just hit new script. Uh, up here, we put in line, and this is gonna do something weird because it's currently broken. Uh, I'm on a preview thing, but that's completely fine. We'll put in pathline 2D here. And we'll just put empty. Now what this does is this will create the file for us in there that actually represents the script in this case that we're going to be adding. Let's go and edit that. As you can see, it just extends line 2D. So what I'm going to do at first here is actually just copy and paste my code into it. It's very short, so I don't feel any need to rewrite it. And as you can see, it's very simple. So we have the extends line 2D. In ready, we just call this redraw line. And the reason we have it as a separate call here is we don't want to be calling to ready. And later on, we may actually want to call this if dynamic changes happen. Redraw line, all it does is it gets the parent, which in this case uh, should be a path. This won't work if it's not a path. Next, we have this tessellated points variable, which we get from path.curve.tessellate. Tessellate's a function which takes any curve that is uh, that exists, and that's a resource, and tessellate will add points to it that sort of reduce the distance between every individual change in the curve. So think of it as helping to define the line or the curve by adding a bunch of points, but where they would be normally if you didn't do anything at all. And then we just say points, since we're on line 2D extending it, when you call points equals tessellated points, it will set the points for the line 2D to be equal to the values that we just put in there. Now tessellate does take a bunch of optional values, uh, at least two, but I found the defaults are pretty effective you don't really need to do too much here, so this is actually how I'm just gonna leave it for the time being. All right, um, now we can actually go back to our plugin. This is uh, part of the, the, the uh, easy bit here. When we enter the tree, when the plugin enters the tree, we're gonna make a call here. It's gonna be add custom type. When you have add custom type, that actually adds a node into the available nodes uh, when you hit the add child button over here this button here or when you add it manually by the right click and add child node 
um, or Command A, as you saw on a Mac. Uh, I think it's probably Windows key A on Windows. I'm not sure what it is on Linux, but regardless, um, an app custom type takes in a few arguments here. So let's do this. So we get our thing up. It says string type. This type is just what we want to name our particular thing. So we're actually just going to put it in path line 2D again. Now it's got a string for the base. That base is the base that this thing inherits from. Now, I should say extends from. One thing that is interesting is if you had your own custom node that had this path line 2D applied to it, you can put that, you can put the path to it all the way through res add-ons pathline pathline 2d.tscn. You can put that right in here. And then when you add it, it'll actually add the node that you've defined to the tree, no matter how big it is, no matter what's in it. Uh, in this case, we're just going to do line 2d because that's all it needs to be. Um, in this case, the line 2d is the name of the node that gets added when you right click and ha hit add child and that's all our path line 2d works on it's just a script that gets applied to that it's not a, a custom node it's just a custom script in this case really uh, let's hit comma and it says script script um, so to make this work you actually have to preload it as a script so we're going to do that. We're going to say preload, and you can see it automatically comes up with this stuff. So I'll just leave it as is. And it's just this particular script. Now that means it will create line 2D. And when it creates the line 2D in the scene graph, it will apply this script to it. If you have a custom node which applies a script manually, you may not need this. Um, I, uh, at the moment, I can't remember. I might actually try that in a future video uh, i don't think it is super important right now uh, for the purpose of the demonstration and it's easy to test um, the next part that you need here is actually if we just hit comma it says texture you can see my screen's a little uh, small texture icon and this is just the icon that ends up showing up in the hierarchy when uh when you hit the the add child button so I'm going to go into this, and I'm going to actually just take this icon that I made uh, a little bit ago, and I'm going to hit Save As. You can see it's already in a different one that I'm working on, but let's go ahead and find this guy. This is in YouTube, to one add-ons, pathline, and everything should go into this particular folder. Uh, by the way, make sure that this is a 16 by 16 pixel icon. And now we can just do, again, a preload. It'll bring up the pathline icon. Just hit enter on it. And that part is actually done. But remember, we got to remove it. So we also do a remove custom type. Pathline 2D. And this should be the value that was passed in here, the name, whatever you named it. Okay, now that we've saved that, we can come over to Project, Project Settings. Here, uh, what you want to do is you want to select this and hit Update. You might need to, although I don't know if this is still true, you might need to inactive and active on it. Um, and that should give you pretty much everything you need. If not, you might have to restart the editor, but uh, I, we shouldn't need to. What I am going to do is just test it. So as you can see, now it shows up in here. It did not before. You can see it derives from line 2D, which is a nice little thing that Godot itself does for us. Um, basically, when we pass in the base, that tells it where to put it in this hierarchy. But since we're expecting the parent to be a path, I'm not going to uh, add that yet. I'm actually going to go ahead and just add a uh, path 2D here. Now this path 2D, we can pretty much do anything we want with it. Let's go ahead and add some points and we'll just put them within the default camera area. We'll do some weird stuff here. 
And if you come over here in this button, this will close it automatically. So that's cool. I'm not going to use control points to smooth this out. And there's a specific reason for that, but for the time being, we'll just leave it exactly as is. And you can see it kind of looks a little bit weird. Um, now I'm just going to go ahead and do the Pathline 2D. And for that, we actually have all these options, as you can see here. I'm going to make it wider. Um, this is exactly the same options you'd get on a line. I'm going to leave the color. You don't really have to do anything too special with it. You could update it with a gradient. I'll show you how to put a texture on it because you can make some really cool stuff with textures and lines and paths um, that a lot of people actually just don't know about. I'm going to put this on round and I'm going to make the ends all round. This is my personal preference. You don't have to do anything. For the border, um, I don't really know exactly how these work, but I've been doing something about like this and it usually makes everything look pretty good. So for the time being, I'm actually just going to hit play. We'll select this as our main scene. As you can see, it made it. Looks pretty good. It's nice and rounded at the corners. Um, not perfect because these things, as you can see, they're sort of uh, they're still angled a bit. And to fix that, you could add control, or you could use the control points. You could uh, just literally make it rounder yourself if you wanted. Um, there's a bunch of different things that you can do to fix that. Uh, I'm not going to go into that too much because it's not really about the actual plugin we've made. Uh, it's just a nice little thing. Uh, I'm going to show you now. What we can do that's really interesting to me at least, uh, and we're gonna take, let's see here. I've got this. I think we want this one. Let's do M. We'll select our texture. I'll just make a new one here. Uh, should be 128 by 128. Good. Put that in there. And put it into the actual thing here. Uh, we'll just name it roadtexture.png. Now, instead of default color uh, for texture here, we'll go ahead and put that in. For texture mode, we want tiled. Now what that'll do is it will, instead of stretching it around the path, it will repeat it over and over, basically as you go along, as points exist. This is why we need it to be tessellated points and not just the points from the normal thing. Let's actually just try this and see what happens. Well, as you can see, it drew it out. And despite you know this looking a little weird, uh, that's because it's got the borders on it. It actually kind of looks like a road. So already, just drawing a path and adding this gives us what looks like a top-down road for a particular game. And pretty much all you have to do is not you know, make too many kinks in the road. Um, you can also try to find ways to make that work, but um, this nice little plugin gives you the ability to make paths using the curve editor that give us uh, nice line 2Ds. And I think that's a really, uh, I think that's something that a lot of people actually could use, especially if they're making like a top-down racing game. Okay, and well, as you can see, that's about it. Um, make sure you remove the custom type after you add it. But otherwise, I think this, uh, this first tutorial here in this series is done. Uh, hopefully, I'll see you back here when uh, the next one is done.